In this video, we're building the largest and most complex feature I've ever seen by far. To refresh your memory, I'm out at Howler Bike Park located about 10 minutes north of Branson, Missouri in the United States. Here I've been working on a dual slalom style trail that jumps over one another the entire way down. So far we've made a fast and fun drop over a berm and a huge wooden tabletop that jumps over the other trail. But both of these pale in comparison to what we're making next. A shark fin that will be 55 feet long and 20 feet high at its peak. That means we'll be doing some pretty high risk maneuvers to build this thing. What's really going to make this feature iconic though is the rock corridor that we're stacking first to build the entire feature on top of. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy one. The start of these is always a little bit like, you've got a bit of anxiety, a bit of just mystery because you don't know how it's gonna turn out because literally nothing's there right now. <laughs> The start of each build normally has the same three things going on. Those being clearing the area, processing wood, and coming up with the design. Luckily, those first two things work in tandem because the area has lots of cedar trees we can use for the project, and they need to come down anyway to fit this massive feature in the space. To process a tree, we first have to drop it. And to do that in dense woods like this, I'll normally make what's called an open-faced notch cut. This cut allows the tree to fall almost completely to the ground before the two notch cuts make contact. After it's down, I'll go ahead and delimb the tree and cut it down to a manageable size. Then I'll go ahead and peel all of the bark off with either a chisel if the tree is peeling easily or a draw knife if it's being stubborn. We peel all of that bark off so that bugs don't burrow down into the bark and eat at the wood. Bugs not only make holes in the wood, but those holes can fill up with water and that leads to rot. Once we had a decent amount of wood stockpiled, I started designing our feature. First, I made a sketch. I do this because it forces me to think heavily on how this feature will be constructed and so the guys helping me can see what I'm thinking. When I'm done with that, I'll walk around the entire space to get an idea of how big this thing needs to be. From there, I take it to my computer to do a really crude rendering so I can get my exact measurements. It's not pretty, but it gives me all the measurements I'll need to complete the project. With the design done, I was able to mark out exactly where the feature would set at. This allowed Mike and Derek from Reserve Concepts to start digging out where the rock corridor would set. We needed to bring the whole corridor down due to how large it was already going to be. And most areas here have a fat sheet of bedrock underneath. So the guys got to work busting out that rock and prepping where the trail would lead into the feature. While they did that, I just continued peeling cedar and staying out of their way because this was definitely a job for the big machines. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Cove and the cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my back stroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All I really take is a little taste. Alan girl, blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it and get away. Shimmy, shimmy, yak. With the area cleared out, we could finally start stacking up our rock corridor. So what that meant was bringing in any massive rocks we could find on the mountain. Using the skid steer, I was able to move a few decently large ones up, but we needed a lot more and a lot bigger. So the reserve concept guys got the big guns out and started trucking up what I imagine were rocks that weighed several tons. we had a good amount of rocks nearby, Mike started in on stacking them up. And doing that is not a simple task. It's a lot like doing a jigsaw puzzle, but with weirdly shaped pieces that weigh about as much as a car, and they don't exactly fit together. As you 
push one into place, you have to worry about pushing the others out of place. Also, we needed to keep each rock somewhat flat on top. So each time Mike would get a rock set, he'd have to run around and shim all of the sides with smaller rocks. On and on it went like that for about two weeks. Mike would get the big rocks in place and A2 and I would shim up any gaps between them. The more you can fill these gaps, the better the rocks will hold. So that's what we did. And after what felt like an eternity to us, especially for Mike because he did the bulk of the work on the rock corridor, but we did eventually have it completely built up. And it was already attracting some riders. With the bulk of the rock work done, it was finally time for me to start constructing our shark fin. First, I had to figure out where the posts were going to be anchored at. Normally, this is pretty easy, but as you can see, it's not exactly flat ground I'm working on. Once I did determine where an anchor point was, I would then take a rock hammer and flatten out the surface if it needed it. After that, you just line up the post base and drill out where your anchor bolts need to go. Once you've got your holes, you just put the post back, tap the anchor bolts in, and tighten them down. Honestly, doing the post bases was kind of fun, and it was extra fun being done because now I could start in with the actual woodworking side of things. The original idea for this rock corridor was to have a rock roof as well. But finding a 14 foot long rock that we felt confident wouldn't break was more of a dream than reality. So the new plan was to run beams across from one side to the other as a brace for the bottom of the structure. All I had to make sure of for these was that they sat higher than 8 feet. That's sort of the general rule for height if you're going to have people riding under something. Once my beams were up, it was pretty much go time for the posts. Again, this is normally something that's sort of easy, and some were, but some of these suckers were over 20 feet tall, so standing them up was quite the challenge. Along with that, some of the posts had to balance on these beams, which required cutting wood joints on the bottom side. For those of you curious, this type of joint is called a fish mouth joint because of its resemblance to a fish mouth. I use this joint a lot because it not only looks cool, but the mouth of the fish actually acts as a grip to the adjoining log. <laughs> So all that sideways pressure that would normally go into the lag screw that you might get is now evenly distributed into the joinery as well. Bye. <laughs> Eventually though, I'd gotten all the fish mouth joints cut and the posts tied in. And now we just had to brace the living crap out of everything. Dynamite! <laughs> remember here is to connect the center points between the braces. Otherwise, they're not going to do their job very well. And I have to give a huge thanks to Austin for helping me brace everything up and putting all of the spacers in. It's not an easy job, so his help was insanely appreciated. And just like that, we had all the posts up, sturdy and ready to go. So the next step was to get my angles figured for the cross beams. To do that, I took all the measurements off my computer and ran string to see how it looked. Once I determined all was good, I then started cutting the posts into more fish heads and getting the cross beams up. Like zero degrees, I'm out the cage. 
bitch, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the, let out the, let out the. Wake up, get out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. You take the west, I'll take on the east. I'ma put him in a cage, never let out the, let out the, let out the. Yeah. I hear him chat to the noise, move too quick, can't stop for the talking. I hear him chat with the boys, nice so tough, but nice keep talking. Just too sharp with the boys, white girls, let it tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hat like fire on the pan, if you wanna touch my feet, use caution. Things were moving pretty quickly at this point, and having just had Ozark Saw and Lumber drop off over 2,000 board feet of wood, we were ready to start putting on our runners. Well, a week later, that is, because after I got my last crossbeam on, we got hit by a pretty massive snowstorm. are kind of the final say in how this thing will ride, so it was very crucial to get them exactly at the right measurements. That's why you're seeing these dowel rods with string on them, because before I started sticking up the runners, I double checked all of my measurements and marked out my ending heights on the dowels so that all I had to do was match those heights with the board. And you guessed it, the only thing left to do now was get our decking on. This is always the easiest and most satisfying thing. Although, I did have to trim every other board a bit wider on the outside edge because our inner curve was much smaller than our outer curve. Now some of you might have noticed something missing from this feature, like maybe a way to get onto it. <laughs> well, I'd been waiting for warmer days so we could actually pour concrete pads in this section because we didn't have any more rocks to tie our bases into. Luckily, right when I got done decking, we had a perfect day to do just that. So I had Derek dig me some holes and A2 and I mixed up our concrete and got everything poured. Money. have made our mix a little bit too wet but once it did finally set i essentially rinsed and repeated the entire process that we had done on the rest of the build so instead of showing you guys all that same stuff that we just did i want to show you guys what is probably the coolest time lapse i have ever recorded but first let me tell you how you can win a season pass to howler bike park all you have to do is head over to Instagram or click the link in my description and follow both Howler Bike Park and Mountain Movement. Once you've done that, go tag two of your friends in the comment section on Howler Bike Park's newest post. This is because not only do you win a season pass, but you'll also win two day passes to bring your buddies along with you. 
Again, just go follow Howler Bike Park and Mountain Movement on Instagram and then go tag two of your buddies you want to take with you on Howler's post. Howler Bike Park is set to open in May, so take advantage of this now while you can and I will see you guys out there on the opening weekend. anything like this, but I've also never seen anything like this. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten the chance to ride it yet. The weather here is keeping the ground nice and sloppy, so it just couldn't happen this go around. And I didn't want to hold this video from you guys any longer, so you just have to tune in next time when we'll be building yet another massive feature on this trail. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Anyway, I'll be getting the next video out much faster, so keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you then. Thank you.